And then what time is Mr. Jensen set for? Three o'clock. Ride your bike today? No, this morning when I got up to leave to come in, it was looking like a rain. Mm -hmm. It rained this morning, morning so that's well, it just did it rain? Yep, yeah, it poured. Tuesday, uh, it poured? Yeah. yeah, it rained this morning a lot. Where? Here. Hole in the surface. It didn't rain here. here. When I got here this morning, there was no rain. I went to put our signs out and spoke with Judge Stutzman, just pulled in. He was going to walk across the street and pop the so He left, he came back, and I went to open the door for him, and everything was soaking wet. And I asked him if it rained, and he said, it, I never saw rain. But he walked in, and it was dry. He walked back out, and it was soaked. That's crazy. And so it must have poured for a couple seconds while he was inside, and that was it. And the same thing with Michelle Bliss. She was out there to start raining, but she went out there. Melissa, Melissa, yeah. I was in here in this room with no windows in it, so whatever <laughs> happened. Happened yeah, without me. Let's check the cameras on this. I don't know. I wish it'd pour rain on my lawn. Lawn talk. Yes. We actually have quite a bit left to do here. I got to go on that road trip and look at that property on Bergner Road. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to inspect Michelle's house while I'm out there. Yeah. See if I find any code violations. Yeah, I just keep that there. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We've been trying to drive around the area for a while. <laughs> oh, you're over there too? No, no. Oh. Amazing. Just say Joe Pony. That's what I thought. Oh. I do. I do. It becomes necessary. I am not going to Indiana. No. Right here. Just in case. Somebody else. Thinking cap is ready. Is anything going to trial while you're gone? I said everything to go. <laughs> I was like, trial nothing, stuff. no offers, all remote. Well, I'll ask Tim when he comes back. I had hoped maybe to co-opt that August 2nd date or July 12th, but um, the case, case resolved when I finished it. Oh, you're done with it? Well, the Corey Lake case, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I hadn't paid attention to it. Um, We still have Michael Latour and Alan Severns on the 12th. And I think you said one of those had resolved Severns, I think. Severns is, yes. And Latour is still unresolved? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, it's still on. This is Dallas Johnson. Yes, it is. I recognize when he came in, but I almost didn't recognize him because he looks good. <laughs> uh, looked like he used to look. We were both younger. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm talking about 25 or 30 years younger, but uh, we got some good news and some bad news. The good news in file 23909SM, a charge of disturbing the peace, 
prosecutor is going to move to dismiss that charge. We've been exchanging emails as to your status. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Per Lisa, Lisa Iantelli at the jail, he's been compliant with his mental health services, but since been released from the hospital. And uh, we understand that you were doing uh, much better and uh, you look better. So Ms. Davis, are you going to dismiss the disturbing the peace charge? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I feel guilty. Nothing's happened yet. <laughs> but thank you very much. All right. The magistrate then sent me an email yesterday said he has a new warrant from April on a retail fraud charge. So I'm gonna arraign you on that. It's alleged in file 231001SM and you committed a retail fraud. I need to find it, it's not in my queue, I don't think. Let me get some junk out of here. Possibly. I don't think he's the soft sit, although I don't know. I because yeah, as long as you're he's here, we might as well. Oops, that's the wrong case. He hasn't said anything crazy yet. Oh, this darn thing. What's going on? Okay. It's alleged that on or about April 10th, you were at the Meyer store and they alleged that you stole more than $200, but less than $1,000 worth of property, $549 plus the cart. And you pushed the cart out and then Officer Hunky saw you later. My recommendation, Dallas, is that you plead not guilty to that. I get an attorney to help you with it. We set it for further proceedings to see how you're doing. Okay. Your Honor, the people would offer to reduce it to retail fraud. Third, there is no restitution. All the items were recovered, okay. and we would recommend fines and costs only. All right, well, let's talk about that.
I, uh, I didn't catch it. If he did, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> All right. Retail fraud second is a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars or three times the value of the property. Ms. Davis has offered to reduce it to retail fraud third and fine and cost only. Um, you haven't actually been arrested or anything on this, but you're gonna have to get fingerprinted. Um, but uh, you would have a fine and you'd be by, barred from Myers for a period of one year. Are you willing to plead to that lesser charge of retail fraud third? Do you want me to appoint a lawyer for you? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Anybody threaten you to get you to do that other than what I just said? No, sir. Promise you anything? No. To understand that if you do plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or a jury. Yes. There'll be no trial. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Mr. George hasn't been appointed on this case, but he is assisting you, but I could appoint an attorney for you. I agree. This this might be a road to nowhere. Yeah, trial, you'd have the right to take the witness stand and I'm testify not sure. on your own behalf, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. We shall see. If you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold or no silence against you. It's a group adventure in 3B. You have 3B. the right to have any of the other witnesses subpoenaed. And you'd have the right to be presumed innocent. You understand? Yes. Were you in the Meyer store on that day, April 10th? Yes. And you try to push a bunch of stuff out the door? Yes, sir. What kind of stuff was it? Um, like... Socks, underwear, jeans. So it was clothing and food. Is that the yeah. push your ass? Where were you going to go with it? Not very far. To my car? Not to be funny, but I, you didn't, I really, didn't really have right. a plan. No. All right. Um, all right. I'm just going to do the standard fine, $75, $75 crime victims rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. There is no attorney fee because Mr. George isn't actually appointed on this case. Can you pay that in 30 days or do you need a payment plan? Um, I can pay it. Bard Myers. One year. I agree. I'm hoping it's the now, next case. Now, you were in the hospital and... It looks like they did a good job of getting you back to level ground. Now you're at an AFC home where you got a stable living place. Yes, sir. Where are you staying? Um, West Street, 402 West. You grew up over that neighborhood, didn't you? No, I grew up on That's first cool. floor down on Third Street. Third Street is yeah. fourth ward. No, Third Street's third ward. Yeah, third no, ward. No, second ward. <laughs> That'd be old. Yeah, one of them. One uh, of them. Streets are I remember when they our were dirt. second ward. I remember when they were dirt. Avenues are fourth ward. Yeah. Tree streets are first ward. And I don't know what's in third ward. I know a lot of people live on tree streets. All right. Everybody is separated by a bridge. Now they don't call them wards anymore. They call them districts. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you an envelope. You got to pay $200. By July 28, 23, zero days in jail. I think he's going to need to get printed on this because he never even actually got booked. Um, what's your thought? Uh, most likely we would need a print order to be able to do it. All right, then we'll just let him go. If we need that. We'll send you a notice. Thank you. All right, you're good to go. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Deborah. No problem. Come on. Yeah, Let's get us a soft sit. Mr. Ridge Morrison. Mr. Morrison, thank you for waiting. We had to do that one. Your Honor, do you want us to do a nolly on 
that Johnson case? Or yes, that would okay. be helpful. Oh, the anticipation is getting This next to matter is People versus Ridge Michael Morrison. The file number is 23615SM. Mr. Morrison, you're charged with domestic violence. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and fine of up to $500. Let me get rid of some of this extra stuff I got in here. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Um, they tell me I make everyone cry. I'm not taking the blame for this. We haven't even really started yet, but are you okay to go proceed? Yeah. All right. Well, nothing too terrible. Why is he crying? Took care of him. Nothing's going to hurt worse than losing my mom. So. Well. I lost his mom. Everything will eventually work out. Let me just get this up. It's alleged that on or about April 3rd that you assaulted Elena Morrison in the village of White Pigeon. As I told you before, that's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Prosecuting attorney Deborah Davis is here on behalf of the state. Your lawyer, uh, Melissa Halleck, is also here. Miss Davis had offered to do a domestic violence with a deferral dismissal. I don't think this is guy either. Probation. Miss um, Halleck offered to Miss Davis a plea to disturbing the peace. Oh, we're at an impasse. Um, Your Honor, I did discuss that offer with him again. Okay. Um, I indicated she did not accept our counter offer. Um, and I explained to him again the what in a, what a simple assault means as far as even if there was no physical altercation, um, that there could still have been an assault. Um, and so he is prepared to plead to the one count of domestic violence, um, is my understanding. All right. Well, let's talk about that. What they're proposing is a probation where... If you comply with the terms of the probation, the charge would be dismissed and be taken off your record. There'd be no public record of conviction. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, you heard me go through the rights here just a minute ago. You understand you have those same rights? Yes, sir. Anybody threaten you to get you to plead to this or promise you anything? Uh, Ms. Davis, or uh, Ms. Halleck is correct for... And I, and I did understand, explain the relationship part is what makes it domestic. Yes, you're living in the same house and she is your mother. Is that this guy? All right. Um, on that day, or the guy that was already called. an argument with your mother, Elena. Yes, for the first time in my life, I stood up for myself and stood in the doorway and told her that she's going to listen to how I feel for once in her life and listen to how... I feel about myself and that I'm not a piece of crap that's going to hell and that she's my mother and I deserve her love. And she said she felt right. All right. Well, what what did you want? Clon your clonopin? What no, was it? I didn't want anything. It I wasn't wanted. about 
pills or prescription meds or anything? No, she thinks that and says that, but it was because I wanted her to listen to me because she's choosing her our, my nephew over me. Oh, good Lord. Well, did you threaten to harm her? No. Um, well, there has to be some sort of... She, she says, says that I did, but I didn't. All right, if I don't give him my pain meds, he was going to beat me up. I wouldn't beat up my own mother. I love her to death. However, she did, I believe what, I guess, give me just a minute. All right, maybe you can ask the questions or we could go no contest. She was Yeah, I Thank you. I didn't want to have to say it. <laughs> but I endorse it. It says in here at one point he grabbed her hand. Was there did you ever get a hold of her hand? Grab her hand? I don't remember. There was a lot that went on that night. Maybe you, afterwards, I might have touched her hand and said, please listen to me, but nothing intentionally to try to hurt anybody. There's a bruise on her hand. There's a photo. Well, that's not going to happen. Right. Well, can we do this by no contest, or do you want me to hold the line? at? The... Uh, we can accept a no contest. It looks like he is supposed to be taking a batterer's intervention class for his Indiana probation. Yeah, and he has. He's I'm in um, anger management, and I see a counselor once a week at Oakhorn and Elkhorn. Who's the complainant in that case? What do you mean? Is the Indiana case? In the Indiana case, who was allegedly assaulted? Was that your mother or someone else? No, it was a resisting and obstructing. Oh. It was a resisting arrest that i got for but it was totally different from here and it was okay. after the all right are you willing to the, if i use the affidavit of probable cause or the bond information form that says there was an incident um if you plead no contest you don't admit what happened but you also don't deny what happened and you would allow or accept that a conviction would enter do you understand so yes yes sir <laughs> And I'm in a safe place now, in a stay home. He opened with no, but moved to you. 301 Twin Oaks Drive. It's my ex's house. And it's a very safe place for me. It's in Middlebury, Indiana. All right. Wow. The bond information report says that the neighbors heard this. It had to do with his refill of his prescriptions. Um, and this was not a good situation. He was angry. She didn't feel safe. There's no real touching involved except for this incident where he grabbed her hand. Mm -hmm. And according to Ms. Davis, there was a photo that showed a bruise on her hand. And that would be sufficient for this charge. And I won't have any contact with her at all. I can lift that, but I'm not going to lift it until um, I get a chance to talk to her. That's fine. If I knew what T. George was doing with Michael Latour, I could use July 12th. Actually, July 12th, I'm completely booked. How are you for July 13? What time? 9.30. I'll stay here for 9 o'clock, and then I have a 10.30. So can we fit this in at maybe 10 o'clock? Yeah, we can All get right. it done in 30 minutes. We can get it done in 30 minutes. OK. Uh, July 13th. Thank you. That was my question. I go to jail now. You may not, you're not going to go to jail right now. They're recommending a deferral. But I want to hear from your mother. And 
I don't know whether you're there or not there, but you can't be there. I'm until... not there. Either. All right, then I can discuss that on that day. I can lift the no contact provision. Mr. Morrison, are you working right now? I'm trying to find a job, but I have to do 36 hours for probation. So my plan is to cut out that 36 hours, which is about four days of a work week. What and kind of work have you done in the past? Medical. What kind I would of work? I was been a CNA and I just graduated with my MA last year. All right, so you're a CNA. What's MA? Medical Thank assistant. You. In Indiana? Yes, sir. Very good. In the community service he's doing that he explained to me is at the Goodwill. It was at the Goodwill in Sturgis, um, but it seems to be a little bit too far. So I'm going to try to do the Goodwill inside of Goshen. It's about 20 miles closer. Fine with me. This will be Thursday, July 13th. Some of us will be in Europe, but some of us will still be here. For ones that are here, we'll address this at 10 a.m. on that morning. Michelle. Your Honor, just to be clear, the bond conditions of no contact yes. with his mother are still in place. Okay. That's correct. Do you understand that, Mr. Morrison? Bond conditions are still in effect. I want input from your mother and the police report and photos. It's not her job. So stay in your safe place. Okay. Away from your mother, no contact till at least Thursday, July 13th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Keep doing your Thank you. All right. You're good to go. Stay away from mom and cowboy up. Next. And anything you can get us, Melissa, from this current supervision in Indiana would be helpful too. Okay. I, I can give her a card of my probation officer. Okay. We got a lot of stuff percolating around, but one defendant isn't represented. So let's take him while Mr. George is working on us. Uh, no. Uh, Kirk Edwin Jensen. I think this is our guy. This will never log in. Well, let's see here. Maybe they got mad because they logged in last time and we didn't accomplish anything. <laughs> yeah. so. No, but that case is going to be dismissed. Yeah, though, yeah, it's part of a resolution upstairs. Come on up and have a seat, Mr. Jensen. Which will be on July 12th. So uh, I should know it, it will be dismissed on July 12th or will we dismiss it now, Debbie? Uh, after the plea is entered upstairs. All right. There are two cases, two retail frauds, two be defendant in ah. Kalamazoo County Jail. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of plea. He rolled over, so we're not going to hear the soft These are files 23167 SM and 23 or 222506. Once the Halleck represents the defendant in those cases. These will be dismissed. After July 12th. Set APT 484 as precaution. All right. Good afternoon, sir. Are you Kirk Edwin Jensen? Yes, I have documents in here that I just filed with the clerk and I need to submit them here. Is that this thing called non statutory abatement? That's it. All right, I got it. I provided a copy to Ms. Davis. Um, it's entitled Kirk Edwin Jensen, Rain Citizen, Rain of Heavens, a set of heart place with an address. Non statutory abatement. Um, 
file number that's not for me two three six six zero <laughs> st charges operating with no license charge two three six six one charge with operating with no license in your possession i don't think you can be convicted of both of those as i said at our arraignment and then the third count is a civil infraction no proof of insurance could probably be charged as no insurance but it was charged as a civil infraction i have the proof of that here not here may i see it All right, that's the person that owned the car. Correct. Yep. All right. Uh, let Debbie see that. All right. Uh, we had kind of a chase our tails around at the time of the arraignment. Um, you are, what do you wish to be, a rain citizen? The, I have a, um... I have a social compact and a body politic, which gives the authority for the credentials that I had when I had given them to Mr. Brooks at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And the officer that wrote the ticket. Right. Um, you had said that you were going to try to get those from him and uh, see them for yourself. Yeah, I don't know whether I got Ms. Davis got that or not. We did get additional information from the um, agency in Detroit regarding passports and they confirmed that they are fraudulent. So if this doesn't get resolved today with the plea as charged to these misdemeanors, then we will be amending to have felony charges. All right, fair enough. Um, people call themselves different things. The common vernacular term has become sovereign citizen. And I do not claim that in any shape, way, way, shape, or form. All right. I rebut that. I completely rebut that statement. All right. Well, I don't, I tried to think of a term for it. Uh, stupid. Well, well, the, you, just a minute. Okay. Let me get my thoughts ahead, together John. here. I, we had a guy, Mr. Aiken, a couple of weeks ago, and we went round and round with him, and he wanted a jury trial, and he didn't show up, and then he was found in contempt, and he went to jail. And, and I said, well, how about willfully misinformed defendant? That's too cumbersome or willfully ignorant defendant. <laughs> and then I was laying in bed between then and now. And I thought, follow me here. Mimsy were the borough groves. It's like, what the heck does that mean? Um, I, I don't know where you're going. Poem, Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. It was written in the 1800s. It's a nonsense poem that doesn't mean anything. And more importantly, there was a science fiction story written maybe during the war called Mimsy Where the Borough Grows. Uh, it's a very interesting story about some toys that were sent from the future back to here. It's pretty relevant right now with cell phones. And um, the third line is Mimsy where the boro grows. And what is a boro grove? It, it doesn't make any sense. So my term for these people that come in with this kind of nonsensical jabberwocky is gonna be boro groves. So this is boro grove. Uh, it doesn't mean anything and neither do your pleadings. Uh, this non-statutory abatement and all this stuff about self-claimed contracts and exhibit B and C has no lawful effect. Um, so the question I have here is, um, do you wish to have a trial on these matters or do you wish to enter a plea to this? Um, so did, does the body politic and social compact uh, is that being disregarded? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, I'll go with the Indeed it is. All right. <laughs> then I will, do you want to have an attorney to assist you? No. All right. You sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The prosecutor is going to charge you with some sort of felony charge. What charge did you have in mind, Ms. Davis? I believe that Prosecutor Morgan looked it up and it was um, fraudulent documentation, basically manufacturing fraudulent passport. And a fraudulent license. Ooh. 
They're not playing. We talked about Conk Republic passports. Uh, whatever you had, and this false passport and some claim that somehow you had an international driver's license. You have to have a driver's license from somewhere to have an international driver's license. Right. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had that too. I have that too, yes. All right. Well, one last I mean, question. Um, on too, I'm sure. The, the documents that were taken by Mr. Brooks, um, I want to make sure that those are entered in as evidence when the time comes. And do you have those, Deborah? I do not have physical possession of them. I, as all evidence, it's held by the sheriff's department and the evidence lockers. So certainly we would introduce those as exhibits. All right. Uh, well, you're always you. polite enough, but you're given what they're charging with you with. I stand this, for well, this. It's the problem with this idea. is this is insidiously dangerous. People decide on their own that the rules don't apply to them. And even though they're polite and respectful, you're yanking my chain. And this is a waste of our court's time and Miss Davis's time. I intend to prove that All these right. things are correct. All right. Maybe you do, but they aren't. This stuff is meaningless. And if everybody decided like you that they don't need a driver's license and they don't participate in our social contract and they wish to use our public roadways and our street lights and our court wow. system, but hey, it doesn't apply to me, things would break down. The rule of law would cease to exist. So it's polite, but it's insidious and it's dangerous. Uh, What's next? I don't have the social contact so I can punch somebody in the nose. I can kill somebody. I can sell drugs. The rules don't apply to me uh, because I'm a rain citizen. Well, I don't work that way, at least not here in Michigan or in St. Joe County. Same rules apply to you that apply to everybody else. And you're gonna get charged with a felony document fraud case. So I'm going to set this for, do you want a bench trial or a jury trial? Jury. Yeah, the same thing. It's hypocritical. The rules don't apply to you, but you don't mind bringing in 30 of your citizens to come in and hear it. It's going to be stuff. just me. It's just going to be just me. Uh, I'm going to set for a jury trial. Your Honor, if we amend it, obviously. I understand. Valid, it will I just want a target out. date. Sure. For August 16. If prosecutor amends to felony. That's what it is. Yeah. If schedule she, a pre-exam. If she charges them with a felony, it'll end up up in circuit court. Judge knows that, but he's just moving along. Mimsy, where the borough grows. That's what this amounts to. It was brilliant on the slithy ties. Uh, it, it's a bunch of nonsense. And uh, so, Mr. Borough Grove, I will see you on August 16th at 8.30. Your Honor, just to clarify a few things uh, in anticipation of that. Uh, as far as service, Mr. Jensen, will you accept service at the email that you have on this non-statutory abatement? Correct, yes. Okay, so just one clarification that uh, I'm gonna send a witness list to him, make sure that he has the supplemental report from- Yeah, there is one years. thing that it does have some merit in here. He asked for discovery and he's entitled to that. So yes, this, your, dis your request for discovery is honored and the prosecution will provide all discovery to the defendant. Yes, so we'll be providing that to the email that's listed at, um, on this document that was filed today. And what email will I, will I use to respond? Yours would, the email that it comes from, which okay. is PRLS okay. at stjessupcountymi.org. Uh, as far as witnesses, the people would intend to call deputy Kevin Brooks, Detective Sergeant Brian Steers, 
Chris Catoni or Catone from the TSA and James Herdman, Special Agent, Diplomatic Security Service from the Detroit office. Will all that be included with the email? Yes, I will do a written, a written witness list. So What's that you know, officer's name? Uh, the last one, James Herdman, H-E-R-D-M-A-N. That might be my thumbnail. I didn't have time to make one before this started. And then potentially this um, Cheryl Pulaski. The owner of the car? Yes. <laughs> I don't believe there, there might have been another backup officer. Let me double check. I don't know if we'll need him, but... Even though you have these mistaken beliefs, what's your objection to having an attorney to help you with this? Uh, I, I do not choose to have anyone, any bar or associates representing me. All right. If it is not charged as a felony, in the meantime, you're to be they here August that. 16th at 8.30. It'll be in another room like and, Scotsman uh, or somebody. Do you have any witnesses we won't that you wish that. to call? Um, potentially the owner of the car. I'm not sure at this point, but that would be one potential minimum. Uh, other witnesses, would they be available? One precaution, the owner of the car might have a Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Mm -hmm. If they're allowing you to drive the car without an operator's license, that could be a misdemeanor in and of itself. So that's something to consider. But uh, we'll address it further. We'll see what Mr. Marvin and Ms. Davis elect to do with this. For further witnesses, would Zoom be available? No, they be here live and in person. Okay. Uh, all right. Any questions? All right. You're free to go. Thank you, Ron. Well, there you have it. There you have it. It came through for me. I I went on because I didn't know when it would start. I hear that there might have been a subset on the way. I had my doubts for a, little, for a while there, but he came through with flying colors. It, it's the usual nonsense, but he has he has new stuff. He has new stuff. Uh, something something about an abatement and uh, <laughs> and something about him not contracting. That that's that's basic stuff. But his documents, it wasn't an affidavit of truth. Uh, it was it wasn't the usual soft sit stuff. It, it, you know, it's, just, it's the same non nonsense. It's the same so sovereign citizen Jabberwocky. <laughs> but it came through. We got full soft sit. He's charged with the misdemeanor right now, but uh, Deborah's saying she's going to charge him with false documents, and he and, and he wants to proceed. Any attorney is going to say, "You need to shut up and settle this right now before you get hit with a felony on this." It, it could be worked out in five minutes if he if he had a competent attorney, but that he listened to. It doesn't appear where it's going. I'll follow it if it's around, but I think that if he gets charged, he gets thrown into another room and there won't be a feed for it. Uh, he, he could go the Fred hearing route. Right now, right now, we're just looking at a misdemeanor. He, he might do that before the other, the, the next, the judge in circuit court might do that before it goes to trial. I don't think it makes sense. I mean, he he understands, you know, he's he's full of the nonsense, but he understands. I think he passes a Fred inquiry to to be able to represent himself pretty clearly. He he was responsive and understood the charges, and you know, he's got a, a horrible idea of it, but he thinks he's got a way to defend himself. I mean, it's it's an abject loser, of course. 
he's doing nothing but hurting himself. But I, I, I think he, I think he gets through that, and they allow him to represent himself under these circumstances. I do. So there you have it. I don't know what to do with this video, though. We did we did have Crayon Guy in there. I felt really bad for him at first, and then as as it evolved, I'm just like losing patience left. I'm just like I I want to give this guy the back of my hand. <laughs> I'm not suggesting I would. I'm just saying the impulse might have occurred to me. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I didn't mean to to sneak attack you, but sometimes I, that's just the way it goes. That 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 you know that was uh, we, we were doing that hearing as it was going, and uh, it it turned out pretty fantastic. We got us another fresh sovereign citizen. Judge Middleton is awesome, and he he was doing this, but he is his patience meter for this stuff is lower and lower. I mean, it never made sense. But I remember when I first started doing this, one of the first ones it was Samir Siraj Maro Bay saying this stuff, and the judge wasn't having any of that either. But he had more patience for it. <laughs> it took him longer to smack him down. Now he's just like rolls his eyes, like "Come on," and and gives him and gives him the Jabberwocky uh, <laughs> speech. <laughs> Ah, I like it. I like watching the evolution of uh, Judge Middleton down, down to zero patience on sovereign citizen nonsense. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I will see you all soon.